Okay, welcome to our first of what I anticipate to be three lectures, short lectures, on Chapter 10, Measuring a Nation's Income. Now, the title can be a little bit misleading, but um, really what we're looking at is gross domestic product and how we measure that. Imagine yourself, you're at a department store or Belks or whatever, and you're going to buy a shirt. And you find a shirt you like, it's at the price you like, you like the appearance, everything about it, you're going to buy it. Uh, you go up to the counter, you put the shirt on the counter, and in exchange for the shirt, you pay the clerk. So on one side of the counter, you have a customer who is spending money. That's an expenditure. On the other side of the counter, you have the clerk representing the business, and they are bringing in money. So depending on which side of the counter, the customer or the clerk, you are either making an expenditure or having income. For the company, the money coming in is income. Let's say the shirt is a $40 shirt. The customer from this side of the counter hands the clerk $40 as an expenditure. In return, they get a shirt. The clerk, representing the firm on this side of the counter, takes in the $40 as income and hands the person a shirt. Now you say, that, that's pretty simple, and it is. What we're looking at here is measuring all of that. Every bit of it. Measuring every transaction that happens in an entire economy. And that's what gross domestic product is. So, if you want to measure all of that income over here, and all of that expenditure over here, you just need to simply choose which side of the counter you're going to measure it from. There's, if you think about that transi transaction, $40 across the counter, $40 income over here, okay, so you have expenditure over here coming in as income, that's not $80. It's $40 either way. It's a $40 transaction. So if you were looking at an economy and measure every one of those types of transactions all the way down to like minuscule transactions to big transactions and tally them all up, you will know how many transactions, how many, how many times a dollar is changing hands, um, called a, a velocity of money. We'll talk about that in a later chapter. Um, but what are people spending and what are businesses bringing in? All you have to do is decide whether I want to measure it on this side of the counter, which is the clerk, or on this side of the counter, which is the consumer. Now, I bet you can guess in America which, we, which way we typically lean. Well, in most countries as well. We typically measure things from the consumer's point of view. However, their expenditure equals income for firms. That $40 that expenditure for the customer comes across the counter as income for the firm. It's $40 either way. So the first lesson is income equals expenditure. If you measure one side or the other, you can get the tally. Now, from the clerk's side, that's called gross national product, GNP. From the, and it's a little bit of a simplification, but you guys are learning, it's introductory economics. From this side of the counter, expenditure, I'm the customer, I'm sliding money across, that's expenditure. That is gross domestic product. That's everything that's being bought. Now, it's not just consumption. There are different components of GDP where people are spending money on stuff, and we'll talk about that in the next video. But first, what we need to do is decide which side of the counter we're measuring from, and we're going to be on the consumer side. So why then is the name of the chapter measuring a nation's income? Well, that's more or less from the firm's point of view, an income. Well, if you think about it, income equals expenditure. You could say income and mean expenditure. You could say expenditure and mean income because if you measure it, all the transactions that consumers have, you also know the income that firms have as well. So, uh, a little bit of oversimplification, but a quick explanation is why it's, it's measuring a nation's income, and then we talk about gross domestic product, which is this side of the counter, expenditure, 40 bucks coming across. Now, I go over a lot of definitions in class, but rarely do I write them on the board. Um, if you're reading through this chapter, again, chapter 10, measuring a nation's income, GDP, which is gross domestic product, is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. Now you will see that I've broken down that definition word by word. The first part is GDP, gross domestic product, is the market value. Now why do we go market value? Well, you think about it, we're dealing with automobiles, we're dealing with shirts, we're dealing with you buying Netflix, we're dealing with you buying groceries, bread, bananas, apples and oranges. You're literally comparing apples and oranges. What is the only way we can do that? How? 
There's only one way you can do that. They only have one commonality, price. Everything that you buy has a price, whether it's a good or a service, whether it's an apple and orange, a uh, Ford Escape, or a uh, new running watch. Whatever you want to buy, sneakers, okay? They all have one common thing to do with it, dollar value. They have a price that they sell at. What's slid across the counter in the product going back or the service going back across the other side of the counter, the income and the expenditure. So we measure everything. The way we can level the playing field is by dollar value. Now, of all, this means everything. So that transaction I gave to start off this video, every one of those transactions, not just shirts, everything, okay? All sales and purchases. Final, now it says final goods and services. We'll get to goods and services here in a minute. What does final mean? Well, you have to think. There are such things as finished goods, and then there are final goods. What's the difference? A finished good may be on a shelf somewhere. There are loaves of bread in a store right now that are finished. They're perfectly, you could, you could, you could eat them. They're perfectly consumable, okay? But they haven't been sold, so they're not final. They haven't gone across the counter, if you will. The money hasn't come across, the product hasn't come back across. Final, which means sold goods, okay? and services, so goods and services. We know goods are tangible, something you can hold in your hand. Services are intangible. You guys are actually receiving a service right now with this education, believe it or not. That's a service. If you call a plumber to fix your toilet, do they install a new toilet? That's a product. No, they fix your existing toilet. That's a service. All right, so tangible versus intangible goods and services. Produced, AKA, this is language course, right? manufactured or created, okay, within a country. So it's country specific. So it's just has to be produced here, not produced there. If it's produced there and sold here, all right, that's what we call an import. If it's produced here, it's counted in GDP. This is where it gets a little tricky. In the next video, we'll be able to explain what's called net exports, okay? produced here, so within a country, so it's country specific. So to be counted in US GDP, it has to be uh, produced within the US. To be counted in, say, the United Kingdom and Britain, uh, in England, uh, it has to be produced in Britain. In France, it has to be produced in France, et cetera, et cetera. Each one of them have their own GDP, all right? So it has to be produced here, all right? Now, within a given, or in a given time period, Usually GDP is expressed in annual figures. However, do you want to go a whole year to figure out how your economy is doing? Heck no, man. Let's largely go quarterly. You'll hear GDP reported as quarterly figures. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Now quarter one is January through March. We typically get quarter four results in January, early February for the previous years, quarter four. So January through March is quarter one. April through June is quarter two. Quarter three is July through September, and quarter four is October through December. Now, which one of these quarters do you think is more important? Well, you guys have ever heard of the term Black Friday? Well, when is that? That's the Friday after Thanksgiving where a lot of people go nuts. They're like all thankful for everything that they have, and then they go, you know, knock each other over at Walmart to get a deal on a TV um, the very next day. So, Black Friday is called Black Friday. It's actually a... a, a, a kind of a tip of the cap, if you will, to accounting. Um, in accounting, when you have balance sheets, income statements, that type of thing, when the ink is in red, that means as a whole, the business still owes money. Okay, so they haven't made any money on the year. So we go all the way, what's usually the next to last or the last Friday in November before a business moves into what we call the black. Their ink on their accounting statements moves to black, which means they're making money. So they're actually cutting a profit. So think about that when you want to start a business. You go 11 months out of the year without making money. And then you make all your money at once when we get into the fourth quarter where everybody just loses touch with their debt and just wants to have a great Christmas. So we're talking about Christmas here, Christmas spending, and Black Friday. All right, that's largely in retail. Um, that's, that's what we call Black Friday. So to go back over, GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. Wow, a simple definition that I've just read it out of the book, it would have taken 30 seconds maybe, but it's the whole point of this lecture. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. Come back and we will talk about the different components of GDP.